What's going on, everybody? Andrew Frazier here with Smashers On for another episode of Smash Talk. And I have my good friend and Dobson Ranch regular, Tony, right? You go by Tony? Tony, yep. Tony. Fat Tony for the family. That's there you go. calls me at home. Fat Tony. And he is hands down probably our biggest career winner to date with the app, um, honestly, just because he found it early and he's been playing, man. So we, uh, I ran into you. It was so funny i've seen your name on so many of the leaderboards i think you've even played in some of like the tournaments that our florida team's been using for testing um and you know and that's just one of the cool things you know the app our entire goal is to make this you know available and people to, to compete and connect and have fun um with top tracer from anywhere um and so backing it up i've seen your name on a bunch of the leaderboards i mean we're approving the scores every time we do an event and you're up there um, typically playing really well, you know, I found out you're actually a decent golfer, which we'll get into later, but, um, yeah, man, just tell me a little bit about how you found out about the app and, uh, what your experience has been like so far, you know, I think you've been playing in most of the tournaments, right? Like the events that are on there. Yeah. I've tried to play in most of the league events that yeah. have showed up closest to the pins. I really like those, uh, especially with the early format. Yeah, um, yeah. It'll change a little bit now with the time coming in. Yep. Um, but I learned it from your, you guys have an amazing staff here at Dobson Ranch, yeah. which is really cool. So I was just out there one day. Um, I forget. He has a nickname out there. He's got the earrings. The mayor. You the got mayor. Jared. Yep. So Jared stopped by one day, introduced me to the app. Uh, I had a little bit of an issue um, logging on the first time yep. uh, with some of the different formats. And he walked me through that, helped me get awesome. logged on and kind of explained everything. So it was really fun just to, to get in there and have another reason to be at the range outside of just being there to practice. So the games were, were easy to, to get into and to learn how to do. It was a simple app, really. Yeah, for sure, man. And that's, and that's really cool. You know, something that's, that's been a question on my mind is, you know, obviously being really close to the project, what I get super concerned about is like, you only get one chance for a first impression. You know what I mean? So I was super hesitant, especially in the beginning when there was so many quirks between Android and iPhone and how you could log in the multiple ways. Cause for a long time, we couldn't even let people log in, um, with an email. Like when they created an account, they like had to do the Gmail one. And that might've even been the experience you had where if you don't use the Gmail button for in the very, very beginning, it would send you an email like, yeah, click here to confirm. And then it was a dead link. You That's know? exactly. Um, so I had a hard time with my email and then I tried, um, the other format, which I forget, uh, it, it worked out for me to do the Apple ID. Yeah. So then yeah, I yeah. just, once I signed in through that one, it was just went straight through and yep. I've logged in through that every time. Um, really simple face, yeah. face ID works just like every other app out Dude, there now. That's, so. Yeah, that's perfect, man. And, and like every app where you have to deal with different quirks and for anybody out there that's considering building an app, it is not, not just something you do easily. Uh, we, we've been learning that and we're continuing to learn that, but it has definitely been a fun journey. And, um, so, but that's awesome, man. So what, in your opinion, like even having, you know, that early frustration or the, the hiccups in the beginning, what was it? Was it just like Jared and his willingness to like tell you about it or what about it kept you coming back? Cause I was worried people in your shoes like would not do it, you know? So it was easy with Jared being there to help me out, to get started, get over that little bit of hurdle. So that's always going to help. And you guys do a great job of having people up and down the range constantly here at Dobson, which is nice. Um, but the format of the, the different competitions was really easy to use. So yeah. closest to the pin, really easy to understand. Um, stroke play, really easy to understand. So you're just signing in. And the way that you play it, you don't have to go through a bunch of windows in the app. You just play Top Tracer like you're there playing it, and then you take a picture at the end. So yeah. really simple to do. And when I saw the points start coming through, yeah, that made it a lot more fun. Yeah, so yeah. I said, I'm going to go up there every chance I get to be in a new competition, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Um, especially with the free, some of the free closest to the pins. Totally. I'm jumping on those. No problem. Once I saw those points coming yeah. through, I'm like, well, now I'm willing to pay the five or $10 per yeah, yeah. event to get in there as well. Yeah. Cause that's, you know, and that's one of the things, part of the strategy that we're not really hiding from people is that, you know, like any new company we have, there's a cost to acquire people, right? There's a cost to acquire customers, you know, for us, we're excited and, and totally happy overpaying in a way because for us, the feedback and the, the bug testing and stuff is what's going to be more important than any money we could make right now, because we're in this kind of for the long haul. 
And um, I'm glad you shared that because, you know, you're decked out in the black clover today. <laughs> I know when we talked the other day, you, you mentioned that you literally only had black clover as far as golf clothes, like uh, until you started collecting <clears throat> on the app. Yeah. And there's a personal story behind why I went to black clover. I've always been a lucky golfer, but I was known mm -hmm. as that and used a four leaf clover on my golf ball as my mark oh, cool. for 15 years now. Do you ever um, play any, I know around St. Patrick's day, some of the brand like Callaway comes out with the true viz like, clover balls. Have you ever used those? So I don't cause I'm really picky. It's gotta be a four leaf clover and they always oh, crip three leaf okay. clovers on them. So, yeah, yeah. um, which is a funny story. My wife bought me a shirt one time randomly, and she thought it was four leaves. It came three leaves. Oh, no. I wear it. I like it. But there you yeah, go. that's one the of the things you do I for like. love, right? But, yeah. <laughs> and um, so Black Clover kind of fell in my lap, and they're an awesome brand. So I yeah. like them. But what I really like about the app as well is having one of few points to be able to cash in for these. There's brands on there I've never purchased, like Travis Matthews, a little bit more expensive. And yep. having already one expensive brand, I have a lot of stuff I purchased. For sure. It's hard to try to branch out. Plus, I know I like these guys. But with a $100 gift card, I'm going, well, now I'm going on their website. I ordered two of their polos. Um, yeah. Just got a Swanee's gift card recently. Yeah, yeah. I'd never even heard of them. Or is it um, Devereaux, I think? Yeah, both of them. So Never heard of them at all. I've been all over their websites now. See everything that they've that's got. That's awesome. So is it um, safe to assume Devereaux is the next one you're going to purchase a gift card for? Uh, I don't think so. I think I'm going to go back with Swanee's. Okay. My polo and my shorts are in my mailbox when I go home tonight. Dude, so, I love it. I'm going to ask, dude, when you get it, just give me a video of you ripping the box open, dude. That'll yeah, be, that'll be, I want to see what you, I want to see what you, which stuff you selected. But you even said too, you sort of happened into like, not just getting the hundred dollar Swanee's gift card, but you, you got it when they were running some promo, right? Yeah, so my wife is a pretty thrifty shopper, so she's yeah. taught me over the years. Uh, some of my Black Clover stuff I get at Dillard's because they have sales all the oh, time. Oh, dude, perfect. Um, but yeah, they had a Father's Day sale for Swanee's, so I went on $100 for a pair of shorts and a polo. Had $100 worth of points, so I cashed it in, bought it. I spent $7 on shipping. So dude. I got a new pair of shorts and a polo coming that are high-end clothes. So that is awesome. That's a really cool feature to be able to just have that option yeah. if you're playing well. And the nice thing is with your net uh, division, yeah. you don't have to be the best golfer that's no. out there. I got beat by a guy that shot 45 the other day, and I shot 32. Yep. Yeah, so yeah. So that's a fun feature, too, where you have that – can you play well? You'll get rewarded for being a good golfer. For sure. But just like in a league event or, or a lot of tournaments that we all like to play in, you've got the ability to do net net play too yeah. and still finish high because you played a little bit better than you normally do, Yeah, you know, which we all have those days. For sure. The opposites as well, but we want to have those right. better days. So Yeah, and that's and that's been one of the big things. You know, Joe is the name of the gentleman who, you know, this is – he's – one of the main people, you know, he's one of the guys that started the whole company that's now housing the app. And that's been one of his main points, right? So um, I don't know how prominent it even is in the app, but our, our main kind of slogan is, um, you know, compete, connect, collect. Um, and the connect is because, you know, so it brings so many more people together, right? Like you said, if you watch on TV, it's straight up golf. Everything's gross. That's what people get accustomed to. And I think at the elite level, that's kind of how it has to be. But when, you know, pickleball and tennis is another great example, pickleball being a smaller court, more accessible to people. Now it didn't completely flatten any sort of skill curve, but it did bring a lot of the other people up. So if you're taller and you have the reach, you don't have to move so much. And as you get older, you can play a little bit more. So that's been one of our core, um, like pillars is making sure that we can cater to, you know, what we're kind of calling some of the new non-traditional golfers and giving a platform to people who, would like to compete or are competitive by nature, but never had a chance to win straight up in golf, unless it was just another, you know, really bad golfer or something. So that's that being said right now, it's cool because we were able to launch the league format with a single event, but having gross and net divisions tied into it. So that keeps you from having to pay two entry fees, keeps you from having to do two scores and takes all the headache away. Um, and that's going to be coming soon to like the standalone events too, which I think will be sweet. Cause you're a, you were telling me about it before you're a fairly good golfer, right? Like what's, what's your handicap sit at about now? Uh, so right now I play to more of a five handicap. Yeah. Um, when I first started at Dobson 10 years ago, I was down at a 0 0.2. Yeah. So that was playing a lot better back then. Um, but the range isn't nice because on the range, you don't have the pressure of the course. For sure. You don't have the pressure of, I might have a bad lie. 
you always get a nice lie. Even mm-hmm. when you're playing, you know, St. Andrews and you're one of the pop yeah, bunkers, yeah, yeah. You, you still have a nice lie on the mat. So you get that confidence to be able to hit a nice shot every time. And then it naturally forces you into the way the top tracer works to those short game shots mm-hmm. that everybody struggles with. Yes. Everybody, if you ask almost any golfer, including very good golfers, mm-hmm. 40 yards to 100 yards is so difficult for them. For sure. And if you play on the top tracer, you play the stroke play events, every hole you're hitting a 40 to 140 yard shot. Yeah. You're forced into it. So it's really good because it forces you into that practice that everybody sure. needs to. And it's, you know, and even just hearing you say it, I'd never thought of it this way, but you know, I wasn't nearly, I'm pretty open about not being bit by the bug when it comes to golf. You know, I'm kind of a weird one in that sense, but for sure, like anytime I would go to the range, just as a, you know, recreational golfer, someone who just hit the range, barely played back when I was in college, there's absolutely no chance you were going to catch me doing two, like two third swings or quarter swings, chipping 30, 40 yards or anything like that. Like that's boring. But just like you said, top tracer, having the virtual golf and all that stuff built into it, you actually have a reason to now, whether you're 40 yards away or you're doing the putting mini game, um, which to me brings up like a second great point is hands down what separates a mid handicap golfer to a, somebody like a five or a below is putting typically, right? Being able to just get up and down. It's no secret that that's the key to shaving a ton of strokes off. And, um, so we actually adjusted the formula. We don't just use kind of like a straight away, you know, this many strokes means you're this handicap because we had to take into account, you know, someone who can hit the ball really far, but can't putt will be like, and it can be an 18 or a 20 handicap on an actual golf course. But on top tracer, if you can just get it within 32 yards and you trigger that putting mini game, you can do no worse now than a three putt. So if a par five is gettable for you, you pretty much can't do worse than a par on those unless you go OB or something. So it was, uh, it's definitely cool to see the differences in people and the strategy that comes into the virtual golf that they have set up versus the stuff on the course, you know? And I see some of that leading into it because in top tracer, I tend, I'm going middle of the green. If I'm on the green, like you said, now I'm, if it's, you know, a normal shot, I haven't hit yeah. a bad shot yet. I'm birdie or par yep. almost guaranteed without a Yeah, your terrible freaking targets are massive. So yeah, for the people at home who've never, who don't have a top tracer range near them or haven't done the virtual golf at top tracer range, um, you know, we can try and pull some clips even to put it over. But basically when you get near the green, you have these bullseyes based on the the real life targets that's on a given range and the closer to the pin you land. So like you said, you go middle of the green, you're probably 10 yards and in is a really good spot to be. Um, you get these bullseyes that are freaking massive where if you're in a bunker or you're 32 yards away, you're right on the cusp. You might only get like two targets instead of seven. And they're like five foot circles uh, to even get, you know, a par or whatever your one putt would be. Mm-hmm. And I like that strategy too, because it will, I th- hope for some people, for me, I've noticed it recently bleeding into the course Yeah. where I'm going, well, why don't I start aiming to the center of the green while I'm out here too? If I can right. get on the green, it might be a, a long putt, but it's a putt Totally. as opposed to being a little more aggressive. I think pin seeking all the time, <laughs> Yeah, amateur golfers. And we get in the habit of, we shoot the pin with our, with our GPS. So mm-hmm. we're always trying to find that yardage and then yeah. our brain stuck on that yardage as opposed to where's the center of the green, what's the yardage there and, and go to that. So this helps train your brain to look for those things as for well. For sure. And, and I mean, you know, I promise that I didn't give him a script or pay him to say any of these things, but <laughs> even what you just said, it leads so perfectly into as an outside in person and working so closely with the instructors we have on staff and the contractors here, even seeing them finally come around and learn how top tracer works. A lot of them have had the epiphany that like, yo, before something like top tracer or even track man range, cause they have a similar virtual golf thing. You really couldn't do course management without doing a playing lesson and playing lessons are hard to come by, especially now that golf's gotten busy. Typically it's expensive, takes a long time. You know, it's kind of a harder thing to pull off. And so to be able to go out there and hit a shot that you can't get away from, because I fell victim to this. I would pick two targets like they say to and say, imagine it's a fairway. And then every time I miss that fairway, I seem to find a way like, nah, there's probably a hill over there. It would have rolled back. That's not as bad as it really was. 
So the top tracer gives you that added layer of like, you really can do course management. The tree trunks will actually bounce your ball around. The homes are actually hard. You know what I mean? And, um, there's some nuances that aren't there. Like, like you said, you don't have to worry about hitting like a side hill lie or something above or below your feet, but the principles are there in terms of course management, when to lay up, when not to, they uh, have the really cool radar on the corner. So like you can see, Hey, the pins 150 yards, but all I got to do is hit 120 and I'm over that bunker. And then, like you said, it's going to roll out. It'll be like a long putt, much better than going for it and sculling it over, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, sure. so kind of switching gears too, and going back to, um, the smashers on app and your experience so far. So you've been, um, you know, winning some of these events by default, just being one of the only people that's playing. I did one of those. Um, that yep. was a good 500 easy points. Dude, right there you there. go. Was that, that was, was that one that was like $5 too to enter? It was five to enter. It was yeah. the second week for the Phoenix league. Yeah, dude. Um, and the poor Phoenix league died at least yeah. in the, the version that it was, but as of the time of this filming Monday, so this coming Monday in like three or four days, we're going to kind of rebring the Phoenix league back under like the West coast one. And we're competing against our course in Florida. So as I was staff, ask yeah, yeah. About that. I don't yeah, know if it's okay now. For sure. Um, so I, I was able to sign up actually for both East yeah. and West coast. Yep. Um, are you allowed to compete in both? I'm yeah. assuming you should be picking one if we're competing against each other. Is so, it it's funny because yes and no. So from like an our staff side, we have like an internal bet here where, you know, me and the team at Dobson are trying to get more people to sign up than the team in Florida can get signed up at Palm Beach National. So we have that. But the breakdown, you know, like I said before, we're going to over give. We want to make this as fun and cool and keep people enticed. And just we always like to give stuff away. Um, so we're going to be raffling cool prizes off to everybody just for inputting their scores. We're going to have higher end payouts for, you know, we're going to tier it based on how people do. So like top 10 and then top 50 and then top 100 and then down with league points and smash cash, which is what we keep referring to, how you got those gift cards. And then like at Dobson, for the first week, I think we said whoever wins the the West Coast gross and the West Coast net, we're going to give them a free bucket of balls every day and a free hour of top tracer every day for the rest of this year. So oh, six more months. Cool. So we're really like we're just going to pull out all the stops and just see what we can do to basically entice people to play, keep giving us feedback, have fun. Um, but no, the, the what I'm the most excited about at the core of this app is that you can play in that Florida league. Sure. If you win and they're giving away something like free rounds of golf, maybe they'll work. I'm sure they'll work with you, but you know, in that case, like even then you're still going to get a ton of smash cash. Like yeah. to me, as people start to see the concept of like, Hey, it's almost like playing a, a video game in the sense, like you could be playing against people in these events. And, you know, we have so many junior golfers out here at Dobson that are, that are really good. And I always ask them like, dude, when you travel in the summer, do you have like a nemesis? And we've got, yeah, man, there's this kid from freaking North Dakota. He's so good. And it pisses me off because he's got to be inside for six months out of the year. And I could play 365. Why can he still beat me? Same stuff can start happening where you could end up locking horns with one of these regulars out in, uh, in Palm beach. And, you know, then it's a friendship or a rivalry or how, whatever it turns into. Like, I think that's the coolest part uh, about the app is letting people connect in that regard. Well, that's one of the coolest things about golf in general. Yeah. Um, it's funny cause I've been a very avid golfer for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a big group of golf friends back in Michigan, went to, went to college there at Eastern Michigan and uh, played all the time. Most people don't believe it, but 300 to 350 rounds a year in Michigan for my entire college career. Dude, so that's a lot. And that's taking the two month, two, three months yeah, yeah. off in the winter. So we were lucky. I was blessed to work at a course where the, the pro would get us on. I'd go yeah. play, t play TPC or Dearborn once or twice no a year. And so I was really lucky in that sense. Um, I kind of forgot where I was going with that, but, um, um, just connecting with people and, and oh, being yeah, able to make friends, the, you know? Yeah. yeah. Golf allows you to connect with people and this yep. is just another way to do that. And yeah. this past year for me has been a, a big uh, jump because even though I've been in Arizona for about 11 years, I got stuck in the habit of looking at golf now the night before to see what cheap single round right. was there. And I'd go pair up with three cool dudes that yeah, I had yeah, a blast yeah. with, but I would never talk to again after that. So you'd get a small social connection. For sure. Uh, but joined a league this year. There's one called the Premier Golf League that I really like doing. Yeah. They host uh, stroke and net or um, net and gross tournaments. For sure. That we can play. Uh, 
And so just getting that kind of connection is cool. And this is just another avenue for that, for people to get out there who may love golf but may have a hard time connecting to people in person even. It'll give you a yeah. way to digitally connect until you feel comfortable with them there and go, hey, why don't we get together on you know, on Sunday totally. and play around in, in person? That'd be a great time. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. I know you said the feature to challenge people is yes. just starting to go live. So I'm yeah, looking yeah. forward to uh, going experience in that once we get done here. Yeah, no, you're going to help us out with uh, another one of our, the the newest feature in that kind of vein is uh, originally it was just 1v1. Um, today, as far as I know, it got approved and went live on the two app stores, but now you can do up to four players. So head to head to head to head. It's up to you. You pick it when you're setting it up. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to go test it out. I know one of the bugs that's right off the top that they're working on fixing again, this happens with some of them, but like for that game mode right now, you can actually pull a picture from your photo library. So that's something we're trying to keep away um, so that it has to be a fresh picture. So, um, and another piece that's been uh, broken for a little while, or at least not as intended on the head to head, why we haven't really started to promote it too hard is the person that goes first has a huge disadvantage because it's not like our event leaderboards. So the event leaderboards, it's funny. So all the approvals are done manually. It's like me and one or two other people at the Florida course, we're hand approving all of these entries. Um, that's why sometimes and, it's two hours. Sometimes yep. It's sometimes two it's right away. <laughs> sometimes it's two days and full, full transparency. We're experimenting with the reactions that these players have because we've been trying to promote, Hey, you know, play this contest. It's five bucks to enter closest to the pin. And it's funny enough, like you hit one to like 0. 0.47 yards. Like you hit it real tight the other day. And we literally had a group of golfers, um, not as good, pull it out and go, yeah, that sounds super cool. And the first thing they did was look at the leaderboard and then they put their phone right back away because they could see how well you did. And so in people's mind, they're like, it's a contest and I don't think I can win. I'm just not going to play because they that haven't. Gives me points. Perfect. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I and, would like to see more people on the Totally. Internet. And it's, and it's funny because I think eventually that'll go away as people begin to understand what smash cash is. The fact that, um, I didn't even finish the thought earlier, but right now for all our paid events, it's kind of a 10 to one ratio is what our smash cash is at for now. So if you play in a $5 event, we are going to just blanket guarantee you're getting $5 worth of smash cash back. Um, I think the East coast, West coast league one is going to be a little different because we're expecting so many people to play. Um, but the courses are running promotions on their own. So like we're, uh, in Florida, I think they're doing some stuff where they're hooking people up with a discount on the balls. If their balls are for their round or their entry, right. Cause they want to beat us. Um, so, but we're always trying to make it, um, value, like build the value in, so as people get accustomed to, hey, even if I get dead last, I'm going to get 50 smash cash. And, um, you know, all I got to do is get 100 smash cash to buy one of those $10 gift cards or 250 to get a $25 gift card. They'll say, OK, like I would have been at the range anyways. We would have been playing some of these games. So I might as well roll the dice. And the worst case is I've just committed that money to buying merchandise or if I win or I place high enough, I'm going to get extra, you know? It's funny you say that. So the first event I played in, I got lucky and I got some smash cash enough to get a bucket of balls here. Yeah. So I cashed those in. It was 120. Yeah, 120. Smash cash. Uh, and so I did the math the next time when there was a $5 event and I saw that there were 50 points guaranteed at the bottom. And I did the math. I said, well, 50, you do that. That's more than $5 worth of towards mm -hmm. a bucket because a bucket for me because uh, I get the discount, yep, yep. $16. Yeah. So I'm like, well, that's it doesn't even take 350s to get to that 120. I'm making money in this case if yeah. I get to keep cashing in for, for, for sure. buckets. So, yeah, that in itself was nice. I'm a math-based guy. So as soon as I Dude, saw that, I'm like... We've got that in that's, common. That's <laughs> that easy right there. That's an easy choice. Why wouldn't yeah. I do that? I'm going to come back and get another bucket of balls. For sure. This gives me just going towards that. Plus, I'm playing a game, and I could win even more. Yeah, exactly. Which, which as you mentioned, I have... Um, $200 gift cards so far, and I have enough right now to cash in for another $175 in, in gift cards. Yeah, dude, so. that's awesome. And and after this, that's what we're going to do, I think, between me and Alex, a.k.a. Too Easy in Florida, and then you're going to be our third. We're doing that three-person uh, smash play to test out the functionality, and we're each putting up 100 smash cash. So this is set to be a winner-take-all. You could walk out with another 300 if you win. That'll get me closer. Um, that's why yeah. I pick Swanee's. Swanee's yeah. has a 200 Fifty dollar gift card for twenty two hundred and fifty points. Yeah, I'm right there. So that's what I'm You're going for next. Is 
is. And that's the only reason I'm going to stick with Swanee's because I can get the most. Exactly. So Devereaux, give us a $250 gift card and I'll come back over that way, okay? So Dude, there you go. Otherwise, they're just going to wait until I build up another 100 after the 250s. Cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so and, and that's awesome, man. And that's one of the, one of the coolest things that, you know, just hearing your take on some of this is, you know, there's with you and I'm sure all of our other users out there, there's going to be things that we never would have considered because we're so close to this project. But even just to hear some of the concerns echoed by you, some of the, you know, things that we think people were going to catch on to are being caught on to. Um, and knowing that everybody thinks about it different, but I now have confidence in saying that for a math person or a deal hunter or something that I am, that's why my biases drove me to doing some of this. Um, it's cool to see other people are picking up on it. Um, and I just think it's, it's really exciting, you know? So I really appreciate you a taking the time the other day to talk with me on the range and B take this time on your Friday afternoon after work uh, to come down. Thanks to your wife. If she's watching for letting him come hang she out with is us. The coolest wife ever. So she always lets me golf and, and do what we need to do. So that's, yeah, that's always a nice benefit to having somebody that's open to that. Yeah. yeah. We got her, we got to get her back over here. She came to practice a couple times. Once she almost hit a little kid with a little toad shot, and so oh. she's been nervous since oh, no. then. Uh, so we just got to get her back over here. I introduced her to, oh, I can't think of her name. Was it Cheyenne? Yes, Cheyenne. Yeah, she Thank was just you. in here before we got started. Yeah. Yep, yep. Super. Cheyenne is super nice. I've talked yeah. to her a couple times. She's always been so friendly. Um, yeah. I wanted to say hi the other day, but she was practicing putting. It was not <laughs> appropriate, so I did not walk over there. Uh, but she was awesome. She talked to my wife about the women's group that you guys have yeah. here and just coming into some of those practice events. And uh, so I'm just trying to get her back in here. The heat's not helping as no, a convincing sure. factor. And uh, yeah, yeah. and she likes her sleep on the weekends. So it's, yeah. we'll get back in here on, on fall, I think. We'll yeah. get her going a little bit more. So And then she'll be competing. I'll get her on there. and Dude, there you go. Fun. Just why not? For sure. I'll put her five dollars in and let her have a good time. So yeah, no, and we, man, and we've been talking about too, like just figuring out ways we could do, like we want to do, like couples leagues in the app. Um, and I was going to ask you this before. I'm glad I just remembered, but you, you talked about when you were back in Michigan, you know, having such a big community of friends and people you could golf with regularly. Do you do like, uh, like a lot of people nowadays? They do like a yearly or a biannually like golf trip. Do you do any of those? Luckily, I've been doing pretty well for myself, my wife and I, the last couple of years. So I've been doing a couple. We're, I'm yeah. really kind of getting into where they're now becoming annual ones. Yep. Um, I'm going back to Michigan again this year uh, to with my best friend, Jack, if you see this. Um, so I went last year to Southeast Michigan. We went to a nice resort that was over there. Yeah. Stayed three nights, played five rounds of golf. Um, we're going to go to the, the Upper Peninsula in September this year. Um, I've actually just been invited into a really cool group that does a two man scramble competition okay. for, um, a championship belt. So we have actual Dude, there you go. championship belt. When is this coming out? Uh, I don't know. Well, Devin's they, sitting over there. Devin, when do you think this will come out? Like a week from now? A week, give or take? Well, it might be niche. So they could find yeah, out yeah. about this. So to say thank you to the group, I actually ordered, because it's a team event, I ordered yeah. a second belt that matches. Dude, that's so you we were have, telling me about that the so other day. That's awesome. we have two awesome. championship belts now, yep. and we're going up to uh, Stone Ridge in okay. July. Dude, that'll be super so fun. July 8th, and we're going to have that competition and yeah. see who can take home the, the two belts. Speaking now. of belts, I think, so Mikey D is our operator in Florida. He is like an absolute wizard when it comes to just golf courses and how to just have a good time and keep, you know, the good vibes and everything going and, and being so creative with the, the offers that he does and the games he comes up with. I'm pretty sure he also got belts for the East coast, West coast, but like legit belt buckles, like cowboy ones. Oh, these so, are championships. Yeah. You guys like have WWE like the WWE belts. ones. Yeah, they're we crazy. we have cool one of those buckle. at each of our courses. Cause we do like a commission. Um, we try to pay everyone commissions and you might know from working in golf, golf typically doesn't pay good. <laughs> so <laughs> That's the only reason I don't work in golf, right. unfortunately. Um, so as just a company with, our, you know, when we manage and own and operate golf courses, we understand that like, dude, people need to be invested a little bit. Like it's nice to be able to give back. So we try to create programs like the ranch card and the smash pass and, and the different players programs. So the team can actually earn commissions and then we track it. And then we give them bonuses on like how they do against each other, like top sellers and stuff. But the top dog every month gets to sign their name on a WWE belt in our shop too. That's pretty cool. So, um, and yeah. the, just having a belt, if you have a group that does competitions, it is awesome. It makes it fun. Uh, when I won the belt a couple of weeks ago, I went over to the casino and pulled it out to show my wife and her family. We were meeting there yep. for the buffet. 
it was amazing how many people had comments. Oh, I'd love to wear that. I guess you don't. You think about it. They don't know what the belt's for. Yeah, it just says you're a champion on yeah. it. So it's pretty cool to walk around with one of those and Dude. everybody kind of paying attention, like you're Floyd Mayweather. But really, you're just <laughs> some guy who played a two man scramble and yep. your partner hit all the good shots. You That's fine. I mean? Hey, man, you know you showed up. You did your piece. You yeah. know what I mean. Luckily, we played well together. That's why we won. But yeah, yeah you know, there's a fun. there's a group out in Vegas. I just did uh, another podcast with uh, a new a new good friend. His name's Jed at Angel Park Golf Course. Um, but one of his guests right before me, they their group does what they call a birdie chain. So if you get a birdie, you get this a big obnoxious chain that you get to wear and take a picture of till the next person makes a birdie. Oh, that's And then they've cool. got cool rules. So it's like if I have the birdie chain and you and I make a birdie, I keep it because it has to be like an uncontested birdie or something like that. So, dude, you're right. All these groups are coming up with cool things now. And I think that stems from the way that like fantasy football leagues have the the trophy and then the punishment for like last place too, right? So mm -hmm. it's, um, it's cool to see all that stuff. Well, and that's one of the things that's awesome about golf is there are so many different mm -hmm. games that you can play. It's funny. I was just watching TV yesterday and uh, – if you see those Carl's Golf Land, mm -mm. throwback to Michigan, it's actually a Michigan store. Um, they just have little flashes and they always yeah. show little, they'll have like all the different excuses that people come up with yeah. in golf. Well, the other day they were showing all the different games flashing across. And I'm, yeah. you know, 80% of them I've heard of. I've been playing golf for a long time. Right. But there were games on there. I'm like, I've never heard. I'm going to look that game up and see. So I'm in interested if uh, at some point we're going to see some additional formats, you know, being able yeah. to play like snake or uh, yeah. different games like that, as opposed to just the scramble formats, which is really cool. Yeah. You want to practice for a scramble, come yeah. up. You got a whole scramble format. All four of your guys and your team yeah. can practice for a week ahead of time. You know? Dude. Yeah, no, you're, you're totally on the money. And, and that's one of the cool things is we we're in, like we will band aid, duct tape, like do whatever it is we got to do to make some of those. A common one is everyone asks about, Hey, are you guys going to do skins and certain things like that? And we're kicking around the, the idea is like, a, what's it going to look like to set that up and, and pay it out and do those kinds of things. But the answer is going to be, Yes. Um, some of them are going to be like, yes, eventually. Some of them we know we really want to do. The more people ask for them, I'm sure the more we're going to push to do those things. Um, but yeah, man. And, and the reason too, I originally asked about golf trips is because, you know, speaking of fantasy sports, I never actually have played fantasy football. The closest thing I've done were like pick'em leagues. Mm -hmm. I just don't follow sports that well. I don't have the attention span to follow players and stats, but what I, you know, we have thought would be super cool about this is you hear about groups like, Hey, they got their one big trip a year, every other year. And just as life happens and people have kids and they grow up, like it's, you start to fall out of touch because life. And so this app being able to at least take away the location and to some degree, take away the timing aspect of it. You know, I'm really hoping as these league formats get dialed in, the huge leagues and the location leagues and the worldwide leagues are going to be sweet, but I'm really excited for groups of friends to just be able to contact us and we can set them up a 12 person league. They can work out how much they want to pay. We'll give them an overall purse of smash cash. We'll set up the infrastructure, how many weeks they want to do what courses, and then we'll let them duke it out with each other. Uh, you know, cause everyone has group chats already. So they can do all that offline. They can keep talking smack and we'll just be the governing body. I want to be like Dana White in the UFC, you know, it'd, that it'd be, be fun. A, I didn't even think about that. that. would be a blast. I just thought about about five or six guys yeah. that I hopefully see once a year. Yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's one guy, Jake, that I've been able to play golf with since I was in college. I've been here for 12 years now. So it's, yeah. it's been a while since him and I have been on the golf course together. It'd be awesome to at least simulate that. For sure. And, and if you have the time to do it at the same, you know, Thursdays, we all meet at a different Top Tracer event. Then For sure. You could just have yourselves on speaker talking crap to each other. Dude, <laughs> exactly. And, uh, well, no, then you heard it, dude. If you find three friends, five friends, 50 friends, whoever it is, we'll put on the first small scale fantasy league, the Tony Baird League, or uh, what was the nickname? Big Tony? Fat Tony. Fat Tony. Fat we'll Tony. do Fat Tony's yeah. League. Fat Tony's Fantasy Chop Tracer. There we go. We got a name for you. But we'll do that. And for anybody that's worried, it's the same. You've never met a guy named Tiny. He's always the biggest guy in the room, right? He's never a small <laughs> yep. guy. So same concept there. No, I actually mm -hmm. used to be 255 pounds, if you can believe that. No way. So, yeah. That was Good a, for you, man. 5% body fat in college, about 100, or in high school, about 170 yeah. pounds for wrestling. Mm -hmm. And then I got into cheerleading. So about two years later, I was 255. So no way. It was a quick 
transition. That's huge. Yeah, that's a very short and span. Two older sisters. So the nickname came very easy and yeah. it stuck with all my friends really quickly <laughs> and it just became fun. Yeah. So everybody's called me that. In college, when I was at the golf course working, yeah, yeah. every year people would come in, is Fat Tony still working here? So that's it was funny. just cool to, and it breaks the ice for people. Totally. They're like, I can't call you. No, no, you can. And they say it the one time, they're like, oh, yeah. I can talk to this guy. That's there you go. So it's a nice ice break. Yeah, too. that's, we try to give anybody and everybody that works with us on our teams nicknames too, partly because uh, Joe may or may not be the best with names, but also, dude, it's more fun when you have a nickname. You feel a part of the crew right away, you know? It does. It's a very personalizing thing. And if yeah. you got a nickname, um, the group I play with the belt when I first started playing with them about seven years ago, just randomly, mm -hmm. uh, when I was a little bit better, they used to always call me Tony Tips. Yeah. I'm like, I don't, I don't play back there all the time anymore. <laughs> we got to switch that name. I'm, yeah, not, yeah. I'm not there anymore. So no, get older, cool. don't work out. Now the ball doesn't go as far. Dude, that happens. It's, you know, not, not on the same scale, but I lost about 40 pounds in like a, a, a year, like two years back. And it was crazy because I wasn't really working out a bunch of it was diet, but even to your point with distance, like just losing it and realizing how much being flexible will add that distance is crazy. Yes. Do yoga. I'm yeah. talking to myself right here. <laughs> this is your, you're asking for the yes. accountability. Like everyone this and hit up advice. Tony and make sure he's doing his yoga. Um, but no, man, it is, it is cool. And you see so many different sizes and shapes on the range playing these events. And like, it's been so cool to see how many people, a, that you never would have guessed are just enjoying golf nowadays with everything that's going on. But B, how many people are actually like getting really good at the game? You know, one of the, one of the biggest shifts I've seen, and I know that I have only a short window, but when I was younger, you know, everybody that was a big athletic kid played all the normal sports, baseball, football, basketball, et cetera. Since I've been working at Dobson the last four years, all these junior tournaments we had, we just had an AJGA tournament, some of the best kids in the country. Uh, we do the JGAA as an invitational every year. We're seeing these kids that are bigger than me, like could easily level me if we were doing Oklahoma drills or something, but they're all shifting to golf because it's a lifetime game. You're not going to get the repeat head injuries. Um, it's cool now. That's a big piece of it. As funny as that is. And, um, it's just, it's one of those things I think people have really slept on for a long time that like, if you are a competitor, there's nothing you can be more competitive than yourself. And that's really what you're playing in golf is yourself. And I'm, was that example. I was a wrestler, a football player, captain on both teams. I always played all the major sports, baseball, and then I started playing golf. Uh, thank you, Tiger, for doing that. I read, uh, had to write a report, and we got to pick any book. I read Tiger's autobiography or biography when he was 21. Dude, that's awesome. How cool are you when you have a biography at 21 years right? old? Right. You know what I mean? I know. Um, and that hooked me. I went to my dad, said, I got to get a set of clubs. And I started playing, and it was me. It was all mm -hmm. me. It didn't matter if I was there with other people, if I was there by myself. This was the first thing I'd really done uh, similar to wrestling. Right. That was me. But even wrestling, there was always that team event. For sure. You, know, you, were, you were playing for the team, and you could mm -hmm. win your match. The team might not do so well, and yeah. your team loses. You're still yeah. losing. But on the golf course, it's just you. That's yeah. the only – I mean, your competitor, but that's who you're trying to be. For sure. And so whether you win or lose is how well you play. Totally. You know, so that's what draw, drew me here. I wish I had transferred earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one win in two years of senior and junior football was not what I was looking for. I could have Dang. gotten a lot better a lot earlier. That's brutal. Because I didn't start trying at golf, really. Yeah. I mean, I always tried, but I didn't start reading books and mm -hmm. um, searching out, like, what's the right form? How do I understand the swing? That was all in college. So okay. I played at probably a 15 to 20 handicap for the first five, seven years of when I was playing. Mm -hmm. And then once I started at the golf course and started, and which is huge, I got the benefit of doing that. Yeah. So now you're around more people that can introduce yeah. you to the books and totally. and, ex, and, ex, um, and even ex extrapolate on the book, right? It's different when you have someone explaining it to you live versus trying to interpret what's on a piece of paper, right? Yeah. The one thing I wish I would have done earlier was get lessons. Yeah. Uh, my wife actually was, again, awesome wife. She bought me a three-hour lesson with Martin Chuck. I don't okay. know if you heard him. He's over at the Raven. Nice. Um, top 50 in the world for golf instructors was based on golf digest dude that is and epic. so i got my first lesson in one three-hour lesson and that's made a huge difference and for i sure. looked at it and i said why didn't i do this before i've always been lucky enough to pick stuff up easy mm -hmm. and every once in a while when i was working at the golf course uh, the head pro would come down you know, what are you doing that for and fix me and go okay i'm yeah. gonna go back in and you know five minute nice. lesson and then 
those work are the on best. those things. So, um, so get lessons. If you don't have lessons, get them if you want to get better at golf. Totally. If you just want to have fun, go out and play. Yeah. But if you're looking to get better at golf, get lessons and practice. And that goes back to the app. Practice fun. Don't yeah. just go out there and pound range balls. That's not fun yeah. for everybody. That was fun for Tiger. That's fun for Brooks Kapka. It's yeah. not fun for a lot of golfers totally. just hitting the range. Yeah. Um, up until this year, I really wasn't a range golfer. This has helped me get on the range more and become comfortable with how yeah. I can practice. That's awesome. Uh, Top Tracer gives you different games. You don't have to sit there and know. Because uh, I think a lot of people, for me, I get intimidated by, I'm not a coach. I don't know 100 drills off the top of my head. For sure. Which drill am I supposed to do? What's best to work on for the short game? Or what's best to work on for ball striking? I yeah, don't necessarily yeah. know that. But if all of a sudden you're just playing the game, you're working on those things without even thinking about it. Because mm -hmm. if I'm just trying to score better, I'm not thinking about my swing and trying to fix it. I'm just working on it over yeah. and over, and it's going to continue to get better and better because, as we all know, repetition is what makes good yeah. golfers better than you're, people that don't practice. You're letting your muscle memory take over, right? You're refining that. So, mm -hmm. no, man, that's that's awesome. This has been a blast. Um, we're gonna I'm gonna ask a couple questions before we wrap it up. Yeah. Um, number one is, and you kind of talked about some things you'd like to see earlier, but if you could pick like one feature you could want to either expand on or something that isn't even in there yet, what would be something you could add to the app? I've, that's tough. It's still early, so I'm yeah. uh, still kind of learning myself. Um, I think you guys are kind of doing it now with the being able to reach out, just seeing somebody that's on the range at that current time even, mm -hmm. and being able to s just send them a quick message, do you want to play a game? Yeah. And see if they've got, what the tough part is, is you're not tied into Top Tracer. So right. if you send somebody a message, they might be five minutes left on their round, so it won't work. For sure. But that would be a cool feature to see people live there on the range yeah. and be able to compete live. Because then you might walk off the range after you competed and go practice putting together. Right. Hey, you want to have a put putting competition now? Let's go totally. over here and pull out the putter. So that part, I think, would be cool, being able to, in live time, connect with people. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I think you guys are starting with with the with what we're going to go out and work on now with the one v one one v one one ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, no, I think that would be cool and and. You know, obviously, it's it's funny. I get a lot of flack for it, but I reference video games a ton because other than normal sports and stuff, when I was a kid, if I wasn't playing sports, I for sure wasn't doing homework. I was playing games. And so, but yeah, the idea of like a matchmaking on top of just being able to like do what you would call a custom game and challenge people you know, like via text, kind of like we're going to do, um, I think it would be cool. Like I think the chess app does a really good job of this where, you know, they have their own ranking and we can do it by handicap or whatever. Um, but allowing you to hit, you know, want to make a match, we can either generate it or you could set the parameters. Not sure which way would work better yet till we test it. Um, and then having it pair you up against someone. And then you kind of have two legs from there. You can go the words with friends route where, you make the match, you play it, it keeps all your info hidden until that match basically gets picked up by someone else. So it could be on your same range, could be right away, could be in three days, could be whatever. Um, but that way, at least, like you said, you have purpose when you're doing your range session. Um, or it could be, um, you know, picked up um, back and forth kind of live. Like, so the chess app, if you've ever played it, you are sitting there and the other person is and you're playing live. And then if, for those of you, if you missed the whole word with friends uh, stuff back in the day, it was I would pick a word and then it would send you a notification and I couldn't do anything until you went. So um, we're going to I really want to try and do both types of things. I think they both have their own ty hurdles, but um, I think that's half the fun is figuring out how it works the best what everybody, what the masses enjoy the most and why they like these things the most and how, how we can pull it all off. So I well, think that's I'm a good one. I'm one of your guinea pigs. Dude, so I'm having it. a blast learning it and playing the different games. I'd love to see more people on there. I'm a yeah. genuinely competitive guy, yeah, so yeah. I'd still want to finish first, but yeah. if I can finish first out of 50, that's mm -hmm. even more fun than first out of five right? or first out of one. That's not really <laughs> satisfying so For much. Sure. It's just nice to get the points, but yeah. um yeah, so I, I'd love that feature of getting more people on there. I know you talked about recently of having some of events where your scores are hidden till the end. Yeah. I love that idea. As you mentioned earlier, somebody pulls it out and they're like, oh, he's six inches away. I'm not going to. Totally. What's a ch Even if you're a good golfer, I'm not six inches. I got to get a hole that's in tough, one. Man. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've been lucky enough to have two of those six yeah. inch shots that, that won both closest twos. 
but I'd love to see it to where nobody else can see that. Yeah. And I can't see it. And I don't know. Yep. Because there was one event where I probably could have kept going if I didn't know the events. Cause I was like, well, four feet's pretty good. But I looked, I'm like, there's only a day left. Right. I might as well just post this yep. score now because I'll probably still get first. Yeah. So not being able to see it's going to change that dynamic, sure. make it a little bit better. So I like that aspect that's yeah. coming. And you that. alluded to it. We just came out with the shot clock because that's another yes, factor, I'm expe- right? That's two of what I wanted to try today. So you guys have yeah. the five-minute shot clock, I believe, on yep. the closest two. And then I think there's a seven-minute one, but I think one of those – is uh, password protected. So I'll tell you afterwards because I okay. think you have a smash pass. Well, we sent an email yep. to everybody at Dobson that has one of our players' programs. We're doing free, but they're private events. So oh, okay. the email, like it's like a speakeasy. If you've been to any of the ones around here, every month, like the uh, White Rabbit's one yep. of them. They'll email you the password for the month. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm oh, going to awesome. make these free events that have slightly higher payouts just as a thank you for everyone who's sticking with us at Dobson for the summer. Um, and then I think that one, the closest to the pin, um, is seven minutes or something like that with an extra minute or two to upload your score when you're done. And I think the public one was five minutes. So yeah, we'll try both of those out when we go out there. So that's the plus cause I saw it on there. It said five minutes plus two. So yeah, the plus yeah. two is just for posting. Um, so I don't know if it even really differentiates it. I think, and that's kind of why I set these two up with it because okay. we wanted to test it with different people. Um, but we also can just turn the extra time off. So we basically, we were fortunate enough that that it got built out in a modular way. So I can do no shot clock, a set time, and then a set time with a grace period. Because really, like you said, since we're not tied directly into Top Tracer, I can't tell the difference between the time. So if you really want to ride it and you want to go, dude, I'm using a minute and a half of this final time to go ahead and hit a couple more balls. I guess everyone has that chance is kind of where we're at. Um, so I have a feeling the grace time might kind of go away or if we can restructure it so that when the timer ends, if it like, if you upload your score after the timer, maybe it flags it. Maybe we do a two stroke penalty if it's stroke play, or maybe we do, you know, something else. So we're kind of feeling it out. We don't know what's fair. We know there's going to be people's phones freeze, internet's bad, service is bad, whatever. So we're just trying to figure out how to accommodate those types of things fairly and then not have it be abusable, you know? So, and that's the thing is, I mean, I don't want to say abuse, but I've totally. taken advantage of the the rules so far. For you, sure. know, you mentioned with the closest to the pin, when you were talking to your friend the other day, when we first met, I had hit, I think 30 shots over yeah. the course of about 10 minutes. Totally. Um, and so it was that 30th shot that got six inches away. You know, yeah. I didn't get that and then keep trying to beat it. If I had only had the five minute shot clock, I think I would have been about four and a half feet. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a big difference. Totally. So I, I like that because it gives you that extra challenge that makes it a little more, I don't want to say realistic because it's still virtual, but sure. a little more like you're actual in a closest to the pin totally. competition or. Like, um, I guess I would compare it to the long drive competitions they have. Yes. You know, these guys get a certain amount of time to right. hit golf balls. And if you run out of time, you're done. But just hit away. See how yep. far you can hit it in that amount of time. So totally. That's a, that's a really cool feature. No. Yeah. I think you're I think you're right on the money with that one, man. And um, I think Jason, who works here at Dobson, he's taught me a ton of the stuff I've learned about working in golf. The way I think the leaderboards will pan out. He said this the other day, and it's kind of the best melding of everything where he said, you keep the score itself private and you show what place you would be projected. So, cause right oh, now, if I you know. notice, everything just says pending, like, and then I don't see that there's any rhyme or reason <coughs> to, there's no real rhyme or reason to how people are stacked up. It might be alphabetical by the time they signed up. I really don't know, but once you upload your score, if we haven't approved it on the back end, it still just says pending as if nothing ever happened. So I think if we can set it up so that it would show you your score and say, hey, you're in fifth. But you don't know by how much. Was it an inch? Was it a yard? Was it two strokes? Was it 10 strokes? Like, who knows where it is? And I think that that, to me so far, sounds like the coolest and, and most understanding. Because I think there's a huge case to be made where some people are like, dude, I just logged my score. I want to see where I stack up. And they might forget about it three days down the road if it's private the whole time. So We've, uh, we're definitely trying everything. So this has been super helpful. 
That's awesome. I'm anything I can help. Like I said, keep touching base with me. You've got my information, and yeah, I'll keep playing the games as long as there's that opportunity to be out there. And again, I've directly seen the results. The forty to hundred yard shots I specifically yeah. talk about. I've seen the results on the golf course in real rounds that yeah. that have paid off. I played here last Sunday or two Sundays ago. Shot seventy four. Dude, that's so it's awesome. The best, best round I've shot in a while. I shot seventy eight the day before. But some yeah. of those strokes that I saved were because I didn't chub that that yeah, 40 yeah. yard shot i was able to get it on the green and have a putt that was that was pretty good so, yeah no um I, yeah. I think top tracer just in general does an amazing job of that because you know as much as people especially traditionalists give me like the sideways look like well, how do you putt like there's no putting that's not real like what the heck dude and then like you said everyone that gives it a chance really finds out okay it's totally not the same but it's just as effective and probably more effective than any of the other drills i might have tried to do it's very realistic too. Even yeah. despite it being virtual and not a game, once you've gotten your line that your your aim mm -hmm. point, you know what that is. Once I hit a shot, I don't have to look at the screen. I know where it's going on that yeah. screen on the actual course. I mean, luckily I'm good enough at the point that if I can feel where that ball's kind of going. But if I'm playing St. Andrews, I know if I blocked it right that it's going to be close to that out of bounds. You yeah. Know? Um, and then what I like is you mentioned video games earlier. I think I was really blessed before I even got real big into golf. I discovered Tiger Woods back in the day yeah, on, yeah. on PC, the very first Tiger there Woods that go. ever came out. And a feature it's always had is that putt line. If you've mm -hmm. played it, it shows you that line. And I was lucky enough to play those video games when I was younger. Uh, I have a hard time explaining it, but that is literally how I see putts on the putt. Totally. Green. When I read a putt, I see a line across the green Um just like I'm playing Tiger Woods, and that's in my head. That's what I'm trying to get to. For sure. Um, and with that same kind of concept, here when you're playing a course, you start to see the course from that bird's eye view and seeing yeah. yardages. Sometimes you're seeing the targets that you're looking at on the range all day yeah. out on the course, huh? And it shapes your mind to start thinking, okay, I don't. it's par four. I don't have to hit driver. Yeah. If driver's going to put me into the bunker – and a four iron is going to put me into the short bunker. I'm going to hit a three wood to go in between those. Yeah. And then you got a wide fairway. You can, mm -hmm. that's where people start to really score and have fun with golf when they're like, I don't have to hit a great shot every time if I've picked the right choice of shot. Totally. And this helps you do that. You start seeing it from different aspects, seeing it from different angles and going, well, now I see the board. I'm not going to hit a driver because that's right in my, my range for, yeah. for that, that bunker over there. I'm going to hit a three wood now. And because you're on virtual golf, now you you hit a little bit longer shot in, but you just got to get close, like you said, yeah, and yeah. you can still score well. Totally. So I think that'll help people change their strategy in golf and then see, well, I can apply this to the course as well. For so sure. it is not the same to those traditionalists, but it can help. Totally. Technology is always something that we should embrace. Yeah. Um, I think that's extremely well said. I don't think it's going anywhere. And, you know, we've been blessed enough to – when we went to the PGA show this year, we met, um, you know, we met Daniel, the guy that developed the software for top tracer in general. And we were talking to him for a little bit and we were like, Hey man, like, what's your goal? Like what made you do all this? And he was like, it's real simple. My dream is I want every single golf shot traced. Like it's huge. That's a huge goal. But like, that's the epitome of like shoot for the moon, land in the stars. Like yeah. between top tracer track man, and now all these other companies that are coming out with some form of shot tracing technology and people are so data driven and, and they're gamifying all these things. Like there is no question that this stuff is going to be here forever. And I think the tomorrow golf league, when that got announced, the, the virtual league, the tiger and everybody are putting on now. Oh, I um, haven't even heard of that. Yeah. So there's a, I think that's the name of it is to, the tomorrow golf league, but they're going to do legit like in stadiums. They're going to be doing like virtual golf. So they'll be uh, the last thing I remember hearing about. It. I haven't followed too closely. Some of my coworkers follow closer, but it's something like they're going to be hitting range balls kind of like we are into a screen. The stands are going to be filled with people. They could see what's happening and then they're going to turn around and then they will. They'll have these putting simulators behind them so they can actually roll a real putt. So it'll be closer awesome. to realistic, but then they're doing it like, you know, like soccer. They're doing it. They're setting up these clubs and like how the live tour had different clubs. So they're starting to pick teams and draft these players. And 
uh, you know, before this whole merger stuff happened, this was one of the alternatives that the PGA had like it been endorsing with Rory and Tiger um, between majors and to keep people doing stuff. And I'm sure to try and do a new high production, try to get new eyeballs, whatever their motives were. But the moment we heard that like Tiger was getting behind it, all those, you know, the older generation or the traditionalists that are like virtual golf's not real. I was like, good enough for Tiger, man. It's good yep. enough for me. <laughs> Good enough for one of the goats, yep, so yep. I can try it out. I love it. I mean, I try to embrace technology. One of the cool ones, um, I watch a guy on YouTube did a, a thing. Um, putt, there's a company that does like the putt lines where it projects your putt lines on. Yeah, I've seen green. those. They have a set of glasses now that read any green instantly. Dude, that and is And it shows insane. you, you wear the glasses and they, it It's got a little AR. Like augmented reality stuff. Yeah, and when you like when you move your head, the putt line stays there. That's crazy. You just look at it. You tell it where to start the putt, and then where the hole's at, and it somehow perfectly reads the green. Dude, that Amazing. is insane. I wonder how many people are going to try to use that in their little weekend leagues. I think probably <laughs> in about five years, it's it was still I think twenty thousand dollars or oh, something dude, like that. Yeah. So, but like everything else, I mean, you didn't used to be able to get any kind of yeah. Uh, shot tracer for less than 20 grand you got you had to buy a, a like a gc quad. quad yeah and now you can go get the flight nevos i've looked at yeah, those yeah. For you get the rapsodo those are another one yeah, less than a thousand dollars that's yeah. a huge increase but tvs were the same it used to be 500 dollars for any tv and now you can go get a nice one for 140 bucks at costco Dude. so yeah yeah it's all going to come down but using this i think is going to be huge for people to open their minds to how beneficial yeah. it can be yeah no man so dude i can't thank you enough tony this was an absolute blast we'll definitely have to sit down and talk more you know Absolutely. this was had a good time. this was really cool and uh i'm excited man we'll we'll see if we can get a hold of any of your friends and we'll do you know fat tony's league we'll give that a shot i'll talk to all and, my group uh, when i go up north perfect and, and all of that yeah yep and uh and yeah man the other episodes of smash talk and if this is your first time watching us tune in you've got myself golf coach Natalie and Matt Stark, all that are on our team. We're typically talking about the current events with the app, the current events with the smashers on golf and entertainment centers, like we have here at Dobson and in Palm beach, Florida, um, just taking our methods and the way that we manage these facilities and set them up for success to bring people who don't typically hit balls on the range out, bring people who never would have considered golf as a hobby in, um, and all sorts of cool stuff. So this is, uh, this is where we try to just air everything out. We want to be as open as possible through this whole process because uh, we're, we're here doing this for everybody else. You know, we, at the end of the day, want to just be able to play golf and have fun and see the game grow. And, um, yeah, man, it's been a fun ride. So I'm glad that we've crossed paths this early and I'm excited to go do the, uh, head to head here after this is done. Yeah, absolutely. I really appreciate it. Perfect. Thanks a lot, man.